Good morning. I decided with the end of the Rona Chronicles that it's not really done, this work, is it? And I had a, th a long think about it and, well, no work is really done. We live in a, a time of endless flux and what we are facing is no different than what previous generations have faced. faced. And we always need to remember that. Now, bearing that in mind, I've decided to start a new series of vlogs in the in the spirit of the Corona Chronicles or the Rona Chronicles, whatever you want to call them. And it's uh, I'm calling this one uh, the Voyage or the Epic Voyage, or based on the uh, this series will be called this, based on. I'll tell you in a minute before I get to that. I had some very sad news last night. We lost one of our, our sisters, a lovely lady called Lada. Her real name is Linda in America. And she I knew she had been sick. She had a stroke a couple of weeks ago, and I really thought she was going to pull through. But she, she passed on the other day. And she was... I've, I've been friends with her for about 10 years, and... She was very common sense, very funny, and uh, she loved men, and men loved her, and she had that. She was truly a goddess in that, well, she'll always be a goddess in that way, and she uh, she was very good to me in the last year and a half as a supportive friend. I mean, she and I, we had like any friendship, you have your ups and downs over the years, but she, it, towards the last year and a half, she was an absolute, uh, you know, a, a real warrior. And she was always very good to me and compassionate and, and caring and uh, encouraging. And it's just, you know, she, she's gone on her next journey. And I hope you're all send her through on this journey and wish her well. But um, it, it doesn't make it any less painful. And uh, so it just it just reinforced to me that we we need this tribe more than ever, and it's not it's not it's not just a one off thing that has a beginning and end moment. We all kind of need each other, and I need you guys, and you need me. And uh, there are um, evil forces who are definitely going to try and shut down my YouTube channel. They've even boasted about it. The same d demon hordes who shut down my original uh, Facebook page and boasted about it. You know, th these creatures can't be reformed. There's no hope for them. They're damned, and so they'll never stop. So I'm just reckoning before the face before the YouTube page is removed. There's a uh, our YouTube these videos are taken down. Deplatformed. I'm deplatformed. I just want to get as much of this out there, of this out there, out there as possible. That was also brought home again. Watching my friend Dean or Crane's first vlog, live vlog, since he got since last September, last autumn, when he you know first became very very ill and had to you know he's a miracle he's still alive, and. Uh, it's only, well, it's, it's it's his own his own personal fortitude plus the love of thousands is what has brought him along to this. You know, has basically kept the warrior alive, and uh, it was you know it was wonderful to see him, but it was very emotional too. Uh, he's uh, you know, I always knew he had a big heart, but you don't, you really see what a big a bigger heart someone is when they're. They're stripped down to their essence, to their soul. And then you see the real person. And uh, so it was upsetting seeing that. And also, it was also uh, encouraging as well. And he's going to, there's going to, people are going to set up a, a, a funding system for him to get an alternative treatment because the cancer's back. And uh, so when that's available, I'll make that known because uh, governments don't care about us. You, you should, if you don't know that by now, you'll never know that. Governments don't care about us. The mass media don't care about you. The majority of society doesn't care about you. And all you can do is find a tribe 
and 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 ride with that tribe as long as you can you can and that's that's been the last 24 hours that's been really brought home to me is the necessity of the tribe uh, the soul tribe it's one of the reasons i'm a pagan a pagan doesn't when it looks at a person who's another type of pagan whether a, a christian uh, sorry whether a celtic pagan looks at an iberian pagan where a nordic pagan and a slavic pagan even though their gods are different or they look at a hindu they recognize the same pagan soul in each one it's it's it, they see it there and there's no theological difference there's no need or desire to convert the other person to your way of thinking it, what happens is like the way i've incorporated hinduism into my into my beliefs and even i you know classical paganism I, uh, greek or roman paganism it's as you supplement it you don't see it as a, a, the devil's the devil trying to tempt you or anything like that you grow and uh, in that spirit it's important to remember that we are in a different a different world than the other people the normies the npcs and that's why i'm the, the theme of this is a voyage and these videos will be the voyage now more than ever we have to understand that reality is cyclical that it comes and goes in cycles and this current woke element we're dealing with these social justice warriors this whole wokeness among the mass media this is the latest incarnation of the demon jehovah the demon Jehovah moves from Abrahamic Christianity and Abrahamic religions into Marxism. If you look at the founders of communism, they were all Abrahamics. And some of them were even priests like, like Stalin. And if you, you know, when that element dies, it infects another. And it's, it's, it's now the same thing, the defining, the defining element of the Jehovah demon is that it's, always a one world solution uh, this is bringing in the sheaves this is a one world thing it wants to control everything it it must have everything so it's globalization is the same thing as one world religion one god and this is what our biggest problem with the alternative scene they don't seem to understand that christianity was the first real thrust at a one world government and one world control because one God in heaven, one ruler on earth, and that's not how nature and the cosmos are. And I really do believe we can smash this reality open and create something that's much more agreeable for us as a soul tribe. You see, this is the difference in thinking. Uh, we do not do this to benefit the world. I'm not interested in the human race as a whole, especially after, I see, after this, how they behave in this corona lockdown. A huge number of the human race, you don't have to hate them or anything, but they're just not, they're just not reliable. They're just not reliable. And they, they're, they're hysterical and easily whipped up into frenzies and things like that. What we can do, and it's even better in many, it's much better than a one world solution, one world holding hands like a Coca-Cola commercial, is that we create these soul tribes made up of individuals who are all on their own personal monomyth. And they can use information and archetypes in order to survive in this. And this is why, if you look at the people who watch these videos, they're every nation on earth, every religion, back, every religious background, every kind of uh, ethnic group, uh, gay, straight, uh, men, women, old, young. It's all out there, and that's because we're 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 we're, we're not recognizing ourselves and each other as 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 the badge as the label as the the form we're recognizing the soul in one another the soul in us in me is recognizing the soul in you and the soul in you is recognizing the soul in another one of our tribe and this is how we we build a reality now people say well that's all nonsense it's not nonsense if you look at if you look at things like quant, what's happening, there's some incredible stories coming out about from from particle physicists about reality is shifting. 
the strange magnetic anomalies all over the world that there's now they're seeing quantum fluctuations in 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 people it's actually been reported in the mainstream we have emerging revelations about the cosmos and the relationship between the cosmos and perhaps human consciousness the the whole dark matter thing has been both solidified as a fact but also may even become more mysterious because the more we peer into the mechanics or the the magic of the universe the more strange it becomes but that strangeness is like an artist discovering a new color for his palette or an uh, you know or an a sculptor developing and finding a new chisel for her her toolkit it's the same thing we're given everything as as did this this material construct you know meanders and uh, becomes inflexible opportunities are opened for personal growth and development and as a result we will find and gather up our own people and that's you know that's important that's very important and we don't do it by having a website or a badge or a logo or a name you know or anything like that we we find commonalities through archetypes and experiences and they glue us together you know the most common experience right now at the moment is like people who are, can't believe the madness of this this whole COVID-19 lockdown and the behaviour of people and the, the, the bullshit the governments are pushing and the ex people accepting it. You've already passed through a portal of a, if The fact that you're even watching this video, you have passed through a portal which has brought you to this point where you're no longer on their, con under their control. So you should feel really really privileged to feel to be in this state. It, you don't, don't be frustrated. Now, that the, the voyage thing is like, I'm comparing us to mythology. We're like the Iliad. They always came home. Jason and the Argonauts, they always came home. There were never terminal moments. It, and I'm convinced that we're at the end of the Kali Yuga. Now, if you don't know what the Kali Yuga is, the, the Hindu cosmological consciousness world is determined by things called yugas, which are secular events of time and space, consciousness. And they're very similar to the Bakhtuns of the Mayans. And they're just, they make perfect sense. I mean, the, the earth, you know, the, the earth goes around the sun, the sun goes around the galaxy, the galaxy goes around the universe. And just the seasons return back. So it was based on that concept. There's no finite judgment day or terminal moment. And this is always something. You, this is why you have to always monitor your Abrahamic upbringing to make you believe that there's a judgment day. Or, you know, when they say this is the new normal, there's a tendency for our consciousness, those of us who've been raised in Abrahamic societies, <laughs> to see that this is the end. That's, oh, this is the last. It finally ends with this. No, these are secular events. They will come and they will pass and our job is to get through them safely and the ones we love through them safely. And the Kali Yuga, if you if you look at what the, the Punanas said about the final end of the all Yugas, not just the Kali Yugas, the, now remember, it's not Kali the goddess, it's Kali the demon, they're two different entities, Kali or Kali, the two different entities, Kali the goddess, the woman with the, the tongue out, she's actually a force of good she represents the 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 sort of like the the power force of the anima where in her benign state she's parvati the the loving mother but she's also the protective tigress almost and that's what that's she's slaying demons when she's looking like that that's not that's not the kali yuga it's named after her it's named after the kali demon and the at the end of the kali yuga there is a all the things we're seeing now, I mean, these are described in the Punanas by the sages thousands of years ago. They always say the same thing. At the end of a yuga, you have things like people are detached from their spirit. They they value possessions more than connections with other people in nature. They're sexually in, they're sexually distorted. Incest becomes a growing thing. Uh, they sexualize their own children. Desmond is amazing. You know, 
this kind of thing. And we now have a minister in Ireland who's best friends, who is like, you know, one of the, the leading sort of man-boy love activists in the UK and brought him over to Dublin for a parade for a parade here and everything. And he's a minister for children. And this is uh, this is all shot and in the Irish in the Irish annals you have this the the lament of the ba of the babe, the the crow goddess who talks about a time will come when this world is not dear to me, where, you know, their cat cattle don't produce milk, the seasons are all wrong. Look at you. I mean, it's, it might as well be winter in Ireland right now. The uh, the fathers will go to bed with their, their their sons. You know, this kind of thing. Mothers will go to bed with their sons. Incest. And, and that's what the Desmond of an amazing thing. It's really the mother there is having a, sexu a psychosexual relationship with her son in a kind of a distorted a uh, gay way, and that's the poor child. Not that I'm not blaming the poor child. That's he's been done. That this is this is Munchausen by you know by proxy syndrome, but yet they're celebrated by the mainstream, you know. And it's if you look at all the SJWs and all the the people who who are enforcing this woke version of Abrahamic carry on. They're all distorted. They're all they're they're all twisted. They they're not they're not male, they're not female. They have endless piercings. They're they don't wear clothes that determine their gender. They're they're scrambled because they're psycho they're extremely unhappy and miserable because they're psychologically and psychosexually scrambled. And they're torn asunder. And uh, they w w you know, it's always like it's the old joke of the the ones who are the activist on the front line is the one that has, who's there for the people, is the one who has to his his own personal life is the biggest mess of all, and he's just compensating in the Jungian manner, for his own failures in life by trying to take on the system, and the fact that so many of them and not only are the activists the SJWs and so on, taken on the system. But the normies are taken on the system that they're part of, and so are even the politicians. That's why things are happening. Like sta a statue of an elk, which was very symbolic in Portland, was born. I mean, that the elk represents the wild man. That's Pan, that's Karunos, that's, you know, the satyrs. That's the, 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 that's the satyrs, sorry. And uh, the shaman, they were wearing the elk horns. And the this is this was the, when they attacked that in Portland. That was the ultimate proof to me that this woke things like Black Lives Matter and Extinction Rebellion are just another form of the religious crusade of Abrahamic uh, Jehovahism. It's just moved into that. It attacked the horned gods. And I, I was waiting for something like that all along. To be honest with you, I was waiting for some kind of symbol of a uh, pure early Christian uh, Second Temple rabbinical iconoclast behavior. And my God, they showed up in spades with that, uh, with that burning the statue of the elk in Portland. And that, that was it. That was, I was completely convinced then. It's also what won't inspired me to start these videos, to start this video series again. The only one thing is the, the midges are, and the mosquitoes are definitely as, as prevalent as ever. But, uh, so, yeah, so, I mean, one of the other aspects, too, is if you see these people, if you, one of the defining aspects of the Abraham, and I look, again, if you're a Christian, I don't care. It's your own business, okay? Or you're Muslim. That's your, I'm not putting you down. That's your own business. But I'm, I'm talking in terms of, you know, as a pagan, what we face spiritually. And we face, we, 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 we face spiritually what you're offering. What, well, not what you're offering, but what you belong to. So I, you know, just as if I don't like communism, if I was, you know, or if I didn't like something else, it's, I, I'm pointing this out as criticism, not as hatred. And, uh, you know, I do, you know, there's even a longing to be a, a, a pagan within the Abrahamic religions. You look at the Kabbalah in Judaism, you look at the Sufis in Islam, and you look at the, 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 uh, the folk Catholicism in Christianity, uh, even things like uh, the harvest festivals among Presbyterians, there is a desire to return. There is a powerful instinctual desire, desire, to return to the pagan, among the you know among even the Abrahamics. They, they, there's a longing to go home, and so it's not. I'm not attacking anybody, and uh, so. But what I was saying was that. 
One of the defining elements of the Abrahamic religions is a lack of humour. There is absolutely no humour in the Bible, in the in either the Torah or the Talmud or in the Quran. The nearest thing to humour I can find in the, in the Bible is actually a racist incident where Jesus Christ calls, I believe it was either a Canaanite or a Pharisee woman, a dog. And she's coming up and she asks him and his apostles for help for her sick child. And Jesus says, why would I help you any more than I would help a dog? And he and his apostles laughed. So you see how, you know, that's where it's, that's, it, it encourages sectarian. And then it, says, then it goes on to say, and then he went and helped her. But that's, that, you can tell it was a later edition. If he was, a, which he was, a strict Orthodox Jew, a Second Temple Rabbinical Jew, who saw himself as the Messiah, no way in hell would he help people who were of a different, uh, especially pagans, who were of a different religious background. I mean, look at the hatred of the Romans and the Greeks expressed in the, in the Gospels. And um, that was funny when I saw a sign, someone saying there's no white people in the Bible. Sure there is, there's Romans and Greeks. <laughs> it's just bizarre. Anyway, uh, they're so stupid. They're so, they don't know anything, these morons. And uh, and that's the thing. The, uh, there's a lack of humour where in paganism and Hinduism it's full, full of humour. And we're full of humour. And I think humour is a great way through this. It it decouples you from the psychic attacks of a system or an individual trying to take you down. Satire is so important <laughs> in all this. It's really it's really a, 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 a survival blanket of many ways, a safety blanket and a survival mechanism, a, a, you know, dark humour. This is why the, the PC woke culture attacked jokes as being offensive this is why they basically murdered you know benny hill completely harmless and this kind of thing you know it's, it's because they they don't they do not want us laughing with joy they do not want joy in our, if you have a song in your heart just like if you have if you're full of joy just like julia says to winston smith in 1984 uh, the the anti-sex league are made about these frustrated women who don't have orgasms and this is why the anti-sex league and you see that today that's what all these woke uh you know these woke types are all they're 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 well in anti-sex league and she says if you're if you're making love or in love if you're in love or making love you don't have a this is how you can always tell someone is love someone or not they don't have a care in the world but if you're frustrated uh, sexually and unsatisfied in your relationship you want to go to war against someone or something else and that's what the anti-sex league represents uh, the unfulfilled anima and uh, the this is you know like the 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 lovers card in the uh, in the the tarot it comes with a warning they're chained by the devil, you know it's either the uh, it's either the the resolution of the anima and the animus, or it's a disruption of the anima and animus, and that's why you know the 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 good side that's the two of cups. But the, the lover's card can go either way. You know, some people see the lover's card, oh, romance. No, it can go either way. It can be a horror story as well or deeply unfulfilling. It's just that you're going to enter into it. When you see the lover's card, you're going to enter into a, a an anima and animal situation. That doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be wonderful or bad. It just means it's that's what you're involved in. It's it, it's and all everyone makes the assumption that it's going to be wonderful. It's often it's very very bad or it's a big mistake, and just because the lover's card does not validate that. In fact, if you see the lover's card on the cusp of a new relationship, it's really a it's often a warning, not a oh look the lovers oh it's going to be a great new relationship I'm coming into. No, it's usually a warning, a big time warning, and uh, many many find that out the hard way that it was a mistake, and. Uh, and and so this series of videos will continue on from the Ronald Cross. It won't be any different. Again, a healing of the souls, a fortitude of battles. We're going to invoke all the archetypes and all the gods and goddesses into our soul and all the mythological tropes we can in order to deal with this absolute madness we are caught within. It's it's no good marching up and down with banners going, you know, I will defeat these, I will take these people on. The answer, and it was Ian Crane said it this morning, is even if you have a blog that 10 people watch, 
get out there and talk about the effects of this madness upon you and your family and your community. Just talk about it. And he's right, seeds are planted. You know, look at the amount of people I've reached through these, these, these nothing videos. And uh, they've taken down Stefan Molyneux and others. Now, I know people are saying, yeah, but build something on BitChute or somewhere else. Look, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. I, you see, what happens is I, I, I don't want to invoke the fates because if I start building something on another platform, what happens is you're kind of, you've, you, put the, you put the psychic energy in motion for it to happen. So you have to be very careful. You have to be very So I'm not going to, you know, I know you mean well saying that, but like when it happens, it happens, and then we do it. But before then, we stay here. It's one of the reasons I don't put, like, uh, incendiary titles on my videos, like, you know, fuck the system or, you know, you know this kind of thing. That, that attracts attention. But uh, I don't know. If, I, I'm pretty sure I'm well below the radar, so I'm probably safe for a long time. Uh, but who knows what could happen tomorrow. But uh, I think one of the reasons that could make me a target is because, well, I told you, one, I have these, like, disturbed individuals who are determined to destroy the, me and what we have here in order to validate their own mistakes in life. But also, uh, there's... I, I go for the civil servants. You see, everybody wants you to go for the politicians because the politicians are there to protect the civil servants. I go directly for the civil service and the bureaucrats because I know that they're ultimately the true priest class behind it all. You know, like, if you think of the Catholic Church and the Jesuits, well, think of the democratic system as uh, the politicians and the civil service are the Jesuits. They're the they're the they're the, the iron glove behind the they're the iron behind the velvet, and all the things in society like I was making fun of folk singers yesterday. All that's designed to stop you from seeking a better life. Oh, he's singing about my struggle, or he's singing. Oh, I relate to that. You know, I mean, I like a lot of music that would probably fall into that scene. I like Neil Young. I like a lot of some of Bruce Springsteen's older some of Bruce Springsteen stuff. I quite like. Uh, his love songs are actually much better than anything else to do, you know. My dad, he's in effect, this textile bill, all this stuff. But you can't deny that some of it's lovely music. And, you know, there's, there's bands, like, there's even, like, a lot of U2 stuff I like. But I just see that as entertainment and music. That's what I see that as, as music and a, a beautiful form of entertainment, the sonic blessing. But, I, I, I mean... I mean, I don't know Bono or those people in U2, but politically, I, I just cannot understand what their whole their whole agenda is. And uh, unless they know things we don't, but I just I just can't relate to it. And I'm not one of these morons who says, oh, it's Illuminati sacrifices one hand over the eye and they all work for Satan. That's all bollocks. That's not real as well. No, well, that's real. That's all made up truth or role playing game stuff. <clears throat> And even if it was true, uh, well, how how does that solve it? How does that that could, that only empowers it? You know, you know, to name a thing is to empower a thing. That's one of the reasons I haven't been on. I, I haven't done, haven't you know, built my bit shoot parachute yet. Uh, to name a thing is to is to give life to it, and we're seeing more and more of the the kind you know like the Abrahamic thing carries with it certain pathological entities like C333 and we see the babbler in the abyss more and more coming to the fore you can always tell when someone babbles you know babble 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 they do this we do that and it never stops and you realise that they're hot bullshit they don't offer you anything that's having it. They, they may they, they, you see like the whole of the media the scandal and titillation that's all babble it, it doesn't go anywhere you know they never reported on Savile but they told us about some footballer who had an affair with a a guy's wife. I mean, my attitude is, what happens among adults? Adults doesn't interest me. So they've already started, I noticed, with the the media have tried to protect the Clintons already by saying that uh, your one, whatever her name is, that had the affair with uh, uh, the one that's just been arrested had the affair with Epstein, that she had an affair with Bill Clinton. Like, that's not important. I don't care about that. It's what you know, it's, it's the whole stuff that went with the, what you did to teenage girls and probably boys as well that's the important part but you can see how they're already swinging around to put what adults do is is just irrelevant they can have the biggest orgies in the world and once they're consulting adults and there's you know they're doing it because they want to do it, that's their own business 
but it's when they do it to people who are not consenting and particularly bring in innocent children, which is the obsession with, at the moment with these elites. That's when it's a problem. Other than that, I don't care. I don't care what consenting adults do with their own lives. So, but they're all in China swing at that like it's somehow it was just a fling between Bill Clinton and other adult women. You know, they're all, because either already and people are, you know, and, and, and so many truthers are morons. They think that like regular sex and pedophilia are the same thing, or regular sex is a gateway to pedophilia. I see that all the time. No, no, eyes on the prize, what, the, what the, the, the evil stuff is, right? You know, adults having sex is not evil. Consenting adults having sex and doing depraved things which are isn't evil once they agree on it. What's evil is when they bring children into it or they have victims who have been lured into it through drugs or something like that. Eyes on the fucking prize. And, uh, and, uh, and that's the real thing. That's, that's the real beef. You know, if something is either true or it isn't. And we're going to find out now if this, you know, if she isn't suicided, if it's true or not, you know, you know, that's what you, everything else is conjecture until that point. That's why I don't pay any attention to these. They show photographs of Epstein with all these famous figures. That means nothing. That's the circle they travel in. That means nothing. I mean, it's like all these idiots who showed pictures of the Beatles with, with Jimmy Savile at, at the top of the pops. That meant the Beatles were all pedophiles, you know, it's like, they, they stay away from those kind of people. They're distorters. And this is why the voyage is, we're on a voyage. Like any of the great epic mythological voyages of the the great mythologies, the great sagas, the great epics, the great odysseys, all along the way you will meet demons, monsters, beautiful sirens, helpful wizards, uh, useful things, dangerous things, traps, secrets, treasures and solutions to get you back home and that's what all this is this is what we're all dealing with now not and as individuals you will find your own treasure your own siren your own leviathan your own storm your own map your own treasures and so on that will help you on your monomyth if you switch on this pagan way of thinking and embrace the embrace the magical, embrace the 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 true software of nature and the cosmos, which is a concept of singular events and not terminal moments of Christianity like judgment days and all and Armageddon and all that kind of stuff and second comings. There is no second coming, there is a repeat, it comes back again. Now remember at the end of the Kali Yuga and I know there's different scholars say, well, the Kali Yuga, well, the general assumption within in Hinduism that we're all in the Kali Yuga. And some say it won't end for another few thousand years. And some say it's ending now. I do believe that we can, we, we can speed the cycle up for us ourselves as individuals by attaining. See, as you, if, as you switch out of the Abrahamic mindset and into this more sort of pagan mythological archetypal mindset, Space-time is then very, very different. Space-time is very different. And you can experience, you experience space-time very differently. Now, to prove that, that you can speed these things up, Crowley's Aeon of Horus was supposed to last for a thousand years. It ended very, very quickly. It ended very, very quickly because the internet changed everything and the revival of paganism kind of made Thelema, I wouldn't say obsolete, but I would say not the main path anymore. And it came to an end very quickly, you know, but it, it, its influence upon Western society was undoubtedly incredible. You know, we're living in a world, ironically, giving us the solutions that we need because if we, if the Crowley never came along, how many of us would be pagans or Hindus? Very few, because we wouldn't have had things, we wouldn't have been ever introduced to it. We, it. You know, they would have been Hinduism and paganism and all the the other, you know, things like the Mayans and stuff. We probably would have never known about that because we'd still be living in a kind of a Christian, completely exclusive Christian world. Uh, all, and now uh, we have ordinary people now who are looking at paganism and looking at polytheism and so on and all these pagans who are woke and SJWs and 
doing all this stuff, they're still Abrahamics. And the fact that they're drawn to Wicca, which is an Abrahamic religion, it's not paganism at all. Uh, it's 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 Judaism, shows that they're still they're still caught in the Abrahamic mindset. That's why all these like these cosplay druids you get at like Avebury and uh, Stonehenge with the tiaras, they all look like Anglican bishops. They don't you know we don't know what the druids dressed like. They could have looked dressed in regular clothes, secular clothes, but they have to all look like Marilyn from the uh, the Borough and Forest Forest Players production of Camelot. With their fucking tiaras and everything, these these people stay well away from them. They're 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 part of the Abrahamic trap as well, and the fact that they've even turned the Neolithic stone circles into, into Christian temples by having their ceremonies on the solstices, like Stonehenge and other places. These were the, the the Druids were never there. They were built thousands of years before the Druids, and I was delighted this year when the when the when the Druids didn't get a chance to get near anywhere near Stonehenge, and it wasn't didn't surprise me that all kinds of paranormal events suddenly showed up around there because it hadn't been, it, it wasn't infected this year. That's why the the stone circles are going to be a lot more powerful now when we go get back to them. But another reason was I really thought the lockdown was ending until I went into a restaurant last week and had to sign my name as Professor Teddy Bearstein, of course on a register and you're you know I realize that how miserable everyone is and there's still as many people now wearing face burkas as there was and that's what them that's what the mask is it's the burka I've no doubt about that uh, absolutely no it's to bring the burka in the 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 christianity failed for the globalists uh, because again most europeans and most americans australians canadians new zealanders are of European descent. Their souls are not Middle Eastern Abrahamic souls. Their souls are pagan. And that's why Christianity failed. Now they're throwing all, and then they tried communism, and that failed as well. No matter how many they sacrificed to Karl Marx and Pol Pot and Mao, it failed. And now the new one is the woke. And the woke is will only be a temporary thing to bring in what they really would. You want to know what the one world religion is going to be for the globalist? Islam. Islam, they look at the Middle East, they look at Saudi Arabia and they say, that's exactly what we want. A An elite class who has spectacular wealth and power and the rest of the masses starving, enslaved and can have their heads cut off or, you know, not doing as they're told on the Sharia law. And they see they see Islam as the as the gold, the new golden bullet for them, but it will fail as well. It's just as they're des they're, they're desperate now. They're they're desperate, and things like that. You know, if you look, if you look at the the rites of COVID nineteen, they are they're very similar to Islamic rituals. You know, the specific times of prayer, banging the pots and pans, and in the evening, the the face burkas, the washing of hands constantly. The lack of drinking. Now in Ireland, we're only allowed to get one pint if we buy a meal. This is like the new thing. This, this, you know, alcohol is now being phased out. They'll get all the alcoholics to drink themselves to death because they can buy all the takeaway booze they want and, and, and drink themselves into cirrhosis or oblivion at home. And what's left there, people then have one pint and say, I don't like going to the pub anymore. It's not very nice. It's not a pleasant experience having to sign in the register. I'm going to give up drinking anyway. So this is, they're bringing in, they're bringing, is, they see Islam now as the hot sweater flooding our, they're flooding Europe with Muslims. And again, I'm not putting down people from the Middle East. I'm just saying, uh, this is what the, this is the globalists who are doing this. They're, they're, they're victimizing and attacking everyone. They're, we're just pawns on a chessboard to them. But, it's again, it's, people say, oh, that's the end of Europe, but they're going to be all Muslims here. No, it's not. It could, it'll just, it could be just Islamic for a while and then end. In fact, it will. It's always in cycles. It's always in back tons. It's always in yugas. Our ancient ancestors, oh, this is why they built stone circles and not stone squares. They knew this. They knew this is why they, they artwork was spirals and swirling. This is why the earliest Christian churches in Ireland and Britain are surrounded by a circle. A circular enclosure, not a square one. Uh, they knew that everything was secular. They knew it was secular, and this is uh, this is so important to us. This is so important for us to know this. This is why they, you know, this is why we 
we have to know that cycles end and begin and begin and end. And, you know, just like our friends who pass on and die, they come back. They, they come back and we come back and I'm back and you're back and uh, hoist the sails. We're going on a journey.